Les premières euh, réflexions contemporaines sur l'environnement thought, euh, on the environment date back to the 60s with the work conducted by the Club de Rome which led to the publication in 1972 of the so-called Meadows report. Now, these thoughts became international in 1972 as well when the first conference was organized by the United Nations in Stockholm, the first conference uh, regarding environmental issues. Said conference then led to the creation of the United Nations Programme for the Environment, PNUE, and it also provided an opportunity to put under the limelight a new concept called eco-development. The eco-development concept was uh, used first time, coined by Maurice Strong, who was the General Secretary of the Stockholm Conference, and it became uh, popular when it started being used by Ignacy Sachs, a, uh, an economist of Polish origin who happened to be also one of the organizers of the Stockholm Conference, and Ignacy Sachs uh, started popularizing and theorizing the eco-development concept. For him, eco-development was a uh, kind of development which was uh, socially inclusive and also respectful of the environment. He and the uh, eco-development uh, defenders uh, thought that uh, the objectives of uh, development remained socially objectives and that these social objectives had to be in agreement with uh, an environmental constraint which uh, was uh, felt more and more strongly and for development models to have a chance of being ever efficient, the uh, solutions contemplated uh, or the economic solutions contemplated had to be uh, feasible. So based on this relatively straightforward definition, Ignacy Sachs defined three pillars on which he considered as the eco-development constant a concept rested. The first pillar was self-reliance. The second pillar is about an equitable management uh, of uh, essential needs for everybody. And the third one was about uh, environmental caution or ecological caution. Self-reliance. The underlying idea is that the development model borrowed uh, by rich countries in the north is a model that cannot be transposed uh, to all the other countries across the world. And in order to uh, stay away from this model, which was based on waste and waste of natural resources, each country, each society had to find its own path towards development, which meant that uh, decisions had to be taken in an autonomous way, alternative models had to emerge, and these alternative models were supposed to take into consideration the difference in history, ecology, and the context in general which characterized each country. The second pillar for eco-development was uh, based on an equitable management of essential needs for everybody. We're talking about tangible needs, uh, housing, food, education, or health care. But also Sachs laid the emphasis on the fact that these needs were also intangible needs that needed to be satisfied. And he thought that everybody had to be able to lead a life that made sense, had a meaning for him or her and that tangible needs and intangible needs had to be combined and fulfilled. The third pillar is about ecological caution. Eco-development integrates uh, environmental constraints, but eco-development is somewhere in between the um, kind of growth model which were based on productivism, uh, but led to uh, resources being wasted. And uh, on the other hand, a kind of radical 
environmental movement, which considered that uh, development uh, was to happen in harmony with nature. Well, actually, the eco-development concept found itself somewhere in between those two ideas, uh, and he raised interest uh, in the uh, developing countries in the 70s and 80s to become later marginalized because the uh, strongest, the most powerful countries obviously did not like the idea very much because that meant they had to question their development model, whereby the eco-development concept was uh, progressively abandoned for the benefit of a new concept, that of uh, sustainable development, such as it was defined in the Brundtland Report, published in 1987. Just to provide more in-depth information on the eco-development concept, you can look at two books by Ignacy Sachs, tracing the uh, evolution of eco-development in a historical perspective.